Hey guys, Crystal here at Crystal's Crafties. Today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can edit my new Canva frames so that you can get this solid patterned background behind your letters. So these are the frames. Um, they have the top letter, let me ungroup that, the top letter here, <laughs> and then the frame behind it. The frame does have an outline already on it, but if you are trying to, let me put that back, get um, this kind of look, let me ungroup this one. where you've got this solid frame in the back that has your pattern and it matches the shape of your letters, you are going to have to do a little editing to be able to achieve this. So, I'm gonna group all of this back together. Let me show you how to do it. Um, let's see, let me just add a new page here move that up so let's recreate this one first the go badgers i'm just going to get the letters that i need so i'm going to need to copy everything i'm going to copy the b copy paste i'm going to do that for the rest of the letters that i need for badgers Okay, so I have all the letters here. Now I'm just going to place them in order. Let's just align everything. Let's just line up the bottoms first. And then from here, you can decide how you want things to look. Um, let's say, actually no. Let me move the first ones up. So you're just going to get whatever you want. You can make this look literally however you would like it to look. Scooch things in more, rotate things, move them up, down, back, forward, whatever you want them to be. Once you've got the basic look of your word, you're going to ungroup these layers here. So I'm just going to drag a box around everything and hit that ungroup. Now I'm going to keep all of my top letters together, so I'm just going to select them individually. I've got the B. I'm going to hold Shift and get A, D, G, E, R, S. And I will move those down out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and group those together so that I don't lose the position that I have them in. Now we can come in here and we can fill these with that checkered pattern. So let me come to Elements and I think I typed checkered background. And you'll throw in some sort of checkered background. One thing I want you to be cautious of, let me turn the background of this to a different color really quick. When you're throwing these in here, make sure that it has white in it. You see that one is just the black, but it's hard to tell when it's over here. But if I grab this one, and put it in there. Now it has the white. So I'm going to fill each of them with that pattern. Whoops. Get in there. Okay. So you can see everything kind of overlaps. If I throw this up on here, um, you're going to be able to see the overlapping outlines. And for some things, like honestly for this, it really doesn't look bad at all because that's a black and white background. It's not terrible. I can take these and I can increase the size of that border that's on them and make it as thick or as thin as we want it throw that back up there. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with that as is, but I'm going to take this border and completely turn it off. 
If you want to get them with just one solid outline around them, we're going to do a little more. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is line up your patterns so that there's nothing like this funky edge that's going on here or this funky edge that's going on here. So just take, double click into whatever letter, and you see I can move this pattern around. If I pull it over to here, I can see these blacks are now lined up with the B in front of it. And this is the area I'm talking about. I've overlapped those patterns so that they line up perfectly. I'm gonna come and do the same thing with this. I'm gonna take this and just move it around until the patterns overlap. Okay. I'm gonna continue that so that we don't have any weird stuff going on. Okay, so now the patterns are a little more cohesive. They're not gonna be perfect because they're all individual letters, but they're a little more cohesive. And when we put this on top of it, some of those junctions aren't as choppy and everything's gonna look a little bit better. But now let's get the outline around all of it. I'm gonna add another page here. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is group all of this together. That is already grouped together. I wanna put them just kind of on top of each other. It doesn't have to be perfect. My whole point here is that I wanna size this to be the whole size of the page. Make it as large as I can. Now, without changing the size of anything, I'm gonna pull this first one off. And we are gonna download this one as a PNG with a transparent background. So you will have to have the Canva Pro to be able to get this particular effect. If you don't have Canva Pro, there are other free sites that you can remove the background in and I very much recommend turning your background a bright green because it makes it easier for any program that's going to be removing a background to be able to see the difference in your design and the background. That bright green is just the easiest thing for these programs to see. Okay, so I have this all here. It's grouped together. I have a bright green background. I'm going to hit share, download, transparent background and we only need this page which is page two and we'll download that all right I no longer need any of this I'm just going to delete it all I can turn my background white again okay so let's come and upload that design that we just downloaded. So I'm going to hit my uploads, upload files. That went to my downloads folder. And there it is. I'm going to bring it back in and I need to make sure it is the exact size of my page so that when I pull this back on top of it, come here. it will be the same size. So here this is, I'm gonna drag that box or that little side down. I'm gonna drag this side up. And now it is exactly the same size as it was before. It looks exactly like what we had before. The difference is now I can come in here and I get this edit photos option that was not there before. When I have the edit photos option, I can come down, I can get a shadow and an outline, and there it is. There's the outline, and you can also increase the size of this or decrease, and you can change its color if you want it to be like blue or, you know, whatever. I'm gonna go back and make that black. And actually that size is pretty good, okay. 
but now you have that outline just around the outer edges of the letters and not cutting into each letter. Take this guy who just doesn't want to work with me. Move up there. Okay. There's that. I'm going to use my arrows. At least I think I'm going to use my arrows. Campo doesn't like me today. Well, I can't move it because my arrows are not working today. Why? Can, maybe I can move this with my arrows. Let's see. Oh, yeah, they'll work on that. Okay, there we go. Whatever works. There, now it's all lined up. And I can come in here and I can change the color of my letters. And I've got my whole design there. Now this is taking up the whole page. I can crop that out. That's just because when we downloaded it and re-uploaded it, it took up the whole size of the page. And that's one method to getting that background on there. Um, let's see. For here, I just typed in the word go and I came into the elements and found a little megaphone and we have created that all over again. Now let's do um, this, this one with the Dalmatian background. So let me add a page here. And I'm going to move this all the way up so that I can copy and paste. What did we have? Miss Rebecca? Um, let's get a different name that's a little bit shorter. Let's do Sarah. So copy, paste. And let's line this up however we want Sarah to be. And you don't have to overlap your letters. If you like the um, letters spaced out, you don't have to do any of this. You can just fill your background with whatever you want. Let me come fill these with that Dalmatian background. Let me ungroup all of this. We're going to move off Sarah. And let's get this Dalmatian background going. Let's make that border a little bit thicker. Just making sure each one is completely separate. So you know, if this was what you wanted to go for, you're good to go here. You do not have to do any other editing. If you want to move them together though, you might not appreciate all of these little lines showing up in your design. So let's do the process again of how to get rid of those. So let's see here. Let's design the word Sarah how we want it. Okay, I think that'll be fine. Let me just make sure the bottoms of all of those are aligned. Okay. Now we have to line this up. Perfect. And take my top layer. Move that off and group it together. I'm going to take the background layer. I've selected all of that. I'm going to turn off the border. Okay, we're going to group all of this together. And then we're just going to make sure these are the same size. We're going to make it as large as we can. Okay. Let me add another page here. 
We're going to pull off the top layer. I'm going to make this whole thing a little bit smaller so you can see what we're doing. We're going to take the top layer, just pull that off. <clears throat> Turn the background green so that any background remover software that we're using can easily see the background. And now we're going to share just this page with a transparent background if you have Canva Pro and you can use the transparent background. And again, this is going to be page two. Okay. We don't need this anymore. We'll turn the background white again. Upload. All right, put that in there and size it to be the exact size of our page. Click the design and we can now hit the edit button here. This is only available once you've got a, a JPG or PNG uploaded into your design. Shadows, outlines, there it is. Okay. And that one's done. Um, one thing that didn't show up here, but that does happen sometimes, and I'll show you with this Rebecca one, is sometimes you're going to get gaps. When I say sometimes you get gaps, I'm gonna move off the letters Rebecca. Move those up out of the way there. Now it's hard to see, but there is a circle here that has this Dalmatian pattern in it. If I delete this, this is what I mean. Sometimes you're going to get these gaps show up in your design. To delete those or to make them look like they're deleted or to cover them in, whatever phrase you want to use there, it's really easy. You're going to come over here to elements and you're going to type in whatever shape you need. This one, a circle works well. Sometimes you might need a rectangle or a square, but this one I'm going to put circle frame. Then come up here to frames and just your basic, basic shape will work. Put that in there to cover whatever it is you want to cover up and then go get the exact same pattern you used and put it in there. The only thing is it's a little smaller. You need it to be the size of your design, so double click. Increase the size of this. And now just like that, if you didn't know that circle was there, you wouldn't know that circle was there and it filled in the gap. I didn't get all my letters, but that's okay. Let's go get the E. And that is how, we'll move that up there too. That is how you can fill in any gaps or imperfections that show up in your design. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you. We'll see you next time.